Hi, Tracy Brown here. Thank you for watching this video. Today we're going to talk a little bit about something that clients come in to see me, either the first session or maybe several into it, and they tell me that they're really convinced that they're emotional eaters. And partial times in those cases they are, but I would say well over 90-95% of people that see me when they feel like they're emotional eating, they are actually something called deprivation driven eating. And so in today's video, we're going to talk a little bit more about the difference between emotional eating and deprivation eating. Um, so in this video, we're really going to just scratch the surface of what the differences are and actually how to deal with those. So we'll first start off with deprivation driven eating. And in the definition, I guess, that I use, deprivation driven eating can be caused by two different factors, and they're very similar. One is that we actually have a caloric or energy deprivation which will cause us to want to eat majority of our intake at a, usually a later part of the day. So let's say for example you're somebody who is eating most of their calories um, in the second half of the day like dinner from hour like three o'clock on and of course if you're eating barely any breakfast and no breakfast, barely any lunch or something similarly snacky or not satisfying, um, you're more likely to come home and your body is going to want to get you to get those calorie needs met. So if it's if your calorie needs, let's say again, I don't do I don't deal in calories that much. All we talk about mostly is intuitive eating. Um, but there's some level of if you're not eating enough, this is going to happen to where you notice that you have a really hard time stopping eating at night, and you might be full, but still find yourself looking in the cabinets. This definitely happened to me. And just wishing that you had more room for more food because you could feel it in your body that you're needing that extra energy even though you might be full. And so that's a very cl usually clear sign to me when I look at somebody's food journals or even just talk to them in five minutes I can tell whether somebody's emotionally eating or deprivation driven eating. Um, so example number one, your deprivation driven eating when you're not eating enough throughout the course of the day and find yourself having a hard time stopping eating at night. Um, you're just at a very high energy deficit and it's hard to put the brakes on basically or it's hard to even be satisfied even when you're full. And so the other kind of deprivation driven eating can occur whether you're in a calorie deficit or not. So let's say that you are eating your, I'll just give an example of a client that um, recently stopped her diet which I won't name the name of it but it came with meals that she had to eat and um, she was eating her, her little pre-portioned meals and snacks and she was trying to turn this diet not into a diet. Um, so anyway, she was eating a decent amount of calories, not too much that I would think they would be causing lots of like caloric um, deprivation driven eating or even binging, but she actually was. She was snacking through the night. In, in this example, her, the biggest issue really was that she wasn't getting satisfied at all. None of the meals were satisfying. They were all, you know, flavorless, not that big at portions, maybe they tasted okay but there was just two bites of it. So there was not one meal in the whole day that she ever felt like, oh, I'm done. I'm done with food. My mind can go into somewhere else. All day long her, her mind was on, when's the next meal and when's it going to happen? And for most people that lasts about two or th to three weeks you can tolerate that without turning into some more deprivation driven eating. And that's what happened for this client. It's happened to me in the past. And um, so you might be thinking, okay, I get it. I do one or both of those scenarios, so what do I do? And the answer, of course, is going to be permission to eat, which um, obviously the, the, the name of the game with permission to eat is letting yourself eat what you want when you're, when you're hungry and stop when you're satisfied. So it's not a better free-for-all, um, but it's definitely um, a way to help start healing the deprivation-driven eating really quickly. You can clean that up within a couple weeks to a month if that's um, something that's a, a, a medium to, mo to minor issue for you in terms of your eating. Um, I actually have an audio that I created, a 15 minute audio that you could, um, it's $5 you could get off my website and it's just something you could have with you on a daily basis to remind you how to um, keep yourself grounded and full permission to eat and actually how to do it without feeling like you're out of control. So it's another resource for you besides this this video as well as besides my other writings about this topic. So um, we will, I will be doing another video about emotional eating 
um, next week. So stay tuned for that. And, and until next time, do your best to look at your intake. Let's say reflect on today or yesterday. And look at places where you feel that there's some either energy or just um, from a palate and appetite perspective, some places where you felt like you weren't as satisfied as you could have been. What could you have done differently? And then what can you do starting now to move forward into less deprivation-driven eating and more attuned, intuitive eating? All right, so until next time, take care. Thanks. Bye.